who's a fair cyber risk analyst at QBank. Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Robert Mella. I'm a FAIR cyber risk analyst with KeyBank. Um, I've been asked here today to share some of our experiences with FAIR, give you some insights, maybe some things you can take back with you, nuggets of information. Uh, before I get started, my background, a little background on me, I've been with Key for about a year and a half, uh, joined Key to an acquisition where I was the IT infrastructure manager, and 14 or so years of my career has been strictly in IT. I don't have a formal risk background or quantitative analysis background. The reason I tell you this is because if you're new to it, if I can do it, you can do it too. All right, so before we get started, I don't know if everyone can see this, but G.I. Joe, knowing Kevin Battle, Water Cooks in there, I find risk analysis a little dry, so I'm going to try and keep things light and have a little fun throughout the, uh, throughout the presentation. So what are we going to cover? How we onboarded FAIR and RiskLens. I'm going to go through a quick example analysis that we did and talk about three challenges, three solutions that you might be able to take back with you. So how we onboarded FAIR and RiskLens. Um, first, we went through executive buy-in. This was done prior to me joining, so it was kind of fortunate it was done, but our senior cyber team spoke to the executive board and, and just basically told them the value of FAIR, uh, how important it was to align risk with dollars and how it helped them with the decision making. In addition to that, uh, they became champions of the program instead of us trying to work this from the bottom up and, and send it into the business. So I highly recommend getting executive buy-in before trying to put together any kind of FAIR program. So after, after uh, executive buy-in, where I joined Key, I was thrown into a week's worth of training, on-site training with RiskLens. Uh, it was new, it was a little bit deer in the headlights, what is fair, what's the model, what's the terminology, couldn't remember the model, it was driving a little crazy. And what I found was there were, not, it was not only for me, but it was about 20, 25 other people involved in the training that would not be performing risk analysis. They were from, uh, security architecture, operational risk, and so on, a handful of other teams. The value there was not only for me to learn FAIR, but they were learning FAIR. They were learning terminology, they were seeing the value of FAIR, and these were going to be some of the people that I reached out to in the future, some of the SMEs I was going to be working with. It made the conversation a lot easier. They knew what I was doing, they knew why I was reaching out to them. Uh, so I know budgets can be tight if you can get training for not only the people who might be performing some of the analyses, get them on board, and just help uh, fill out the program as a whole. All right, so now, well, that yellow is on white is horrible. All right, there's a yellow vertical over there. Um, we're going to talk about an analysis that we performed. Uh, so after we went through training, started to perform a couple analyses, we were tasked with performing a risk analysis on our current email filter system and comparing it to a proposed uh, purchase of a new email filter system and seeing what the risk reduction was. So how do we tackle this? We looked at the current system and said it, it blocks or it protects for three scenarios, spam, uh, phishing, and malware, you can see there. So we did a, a risk analysis on each one of those individually, identified the annualized loss exposure for each, and then we packaged it up and aggregated it into one analysis. And that's the blue vertical you can see there. Wow, those numbers are horrible, uh, the, the video. Uh, it's like I think about $31.6 million in annualized loss exposure in that blue vertical there, and that's the average loss. So that was the current state risk. Then we go ahead and say we need to do a future state risk. So we were also fortunate enough that we had internally a proof of concept with our email filtering team. They were looking at this new product and they gave us reduction numbers on spam, phishing, and malware. So we had those numbers. So we were able to go forward and do future states on all three of these just by versioning out the, the original analysis and creating a quick turnaround on that. Again, packaging that up, aggregating it into one future state loss or future state risk. There is a, I don't think you see it, but there's a yellow vertical on the right there, and I think that's about 17 million and change. Uh, these numbers are docked up, for example, but those are the average annualized loss exposures. So you, you could see the, the risk reduction in the future state. So why is this important? When we went to management and reported on this, they were able to use this as another tool in their tool belt to make a decision on whether or not we should go ahead with this initiative, with purchasing this product. What were they looking at? The cost of the, the solution, uh, maybe the contractual cost year over year, what that would cost, maybe the impact to the bank, and then they were looking at the risk reduction saying, does it make sense? So it's just, it's just a, a way for the business to look at all of our risks and, and in this case, make a decision on a product or a purchase. All right, now we're going to move into three challenges we had and three solutions. Um, 
Why do I have a cartoon up here? One of my favorites from the 80s, DuckTales, if anybody remembers this one. Um, this is a young Scrooge McDuck working to earn his first dime. If anybody remembers this, the moral of this uh, episode, I don't know why I remember it since I was a kid, was work smarter, not harder. So what is Scrooge doing? He's developed a process to shine more than one pair of shoes at a time, and he's making money, and Scrooge likes to dive through his bowl, right? So this is this has stuck with me for a long time. This is how I approach problems. I, I'm always trying to build a process. I'm, I don't want to do things more than once if I don't have to, or need to try and get it repeatable. So the three challenges, we're going to keep this in mind, the three challenges we're going to approach are slow progress with analyses, issues with reporting results, and identifying SMEs uh, and managing SMEs. Solution number one, slow progress. Data gathering. There are some things you can't control. I've had scenarios where I can't get on a SMEs calendar. They, they come back from PTO and they initially, right away, jump into jury duty and I, it's driving me crazy. I can't get in touch with them. So I can't control that. But when I do finally get in touch with them, what I can control is when I'm gathering information is not to be perfect. I have a bad tendency myself of trying to be too granular um, to my own detriment. Um, and trying not to be perfect, trying to keep things moving is important. You don't want to get stuck with analysis paralysis. Some of you might, you know, we might all be like-minded people here and have that same issue. So try every day, I try every all, all the time as I'm approaching analysis to really have an 80-20 mentality. If you've gathered enough information, if you can perform the analysis, get it done. Keep moving. You can always go back and tweak your numbers later. Um, the way I proved this to myself is I was disbelieving. I took analysis, I knew I had a report on it. I said, all right, it might take me another month or two to get more precise data inputs. So I just said, all right, I'm gonna do that. I versioned down an analysis, re-ran it with some tighter numbers, and it didn't have that great of an effect. And yet, it made my, my annualized loss exposure a little bit different, but it wasn't drastically off of what I had already. So I had good numbers, I was able to keep moving. Another comfort is you're working in ranges. Remember that the FAIR model is allowing you to work in ranges, so it gives you that flexibility. You're not looking for 82% resistive strength. You're looking for a range of 80 to 85 or 80 to 90, whatever the number is. Uh, so just remember that so you can keep moving. In addition, SME questions. Have some uniformity when you approach SMEs. You're looking for information. You're trying to get information back from them. So we initially, we thought we were on the right track, we uh, developed questions, general questions for every variable and fair. And now you're approaching SMEs and you're, you're still speaking in fair terms and you're trying to bridge the gap and the communication's not there. So we decided to go back and create contextual questions for every variable, whether it was loss of end frequency, vulnerability, resistance strength, you name it. And this opened up the lines of communication a little bit more. So now we can go to a SME and say, um, for vulnerability, what's the likelihood of privileged insiders exfiltrating our customer data, private customer data from the XYZ database? And that SME is the owner of the XYZ database. So now it hits home for them. They're able to understand a little bit more, relate to a little bit more, and it made things just turn out a lot quicker. So I highly recommend, you know, when speaking to SMEs, you can educate them a little bit on FAIR, but you still have to speak to them in, in their language, even if it's technical and, and with respect to their asset. All right, solution number two, reporting results. We have here a future state and rationale template. So when reporting, Always include a future state if you can, and I, I for the most part, think I always can. Um, it, it, the future state is going to allow you to show some kind of a risk reduction scenario. Uh, so as we saw earlier in the email filtering solution, we had a current state and we had a future state. That was a little bit easier because I was asked to perform an analysis on a future state of a new product. But let's say you ha I had a, I've had scenarios where they wanted me to do uh, analysis on the top five risks in a risk register. So I reported on them and it just felt like it fell flat. I, didn't, I only had a current state for each of them. So I went back to my SMEs and I said, all right, is there anything coming down the line in six months that you're working on that could reduce the risk? And a couple times they go, yeah, you didn't ask that. And I went back and I was able to perform a future state. So he said, Rob, uh, I spoke to my SME and they don't have any product. They don't have anything coming down the line. Well, now you can ask them if you had a magic wand, you can implement some kind of fix, or you had unlimited budget and you can go into the market and buy that tool that you want to buy that they won't let you buy. What would it be? How much would it reduce, let's say, your loss of end frequency? And then you can develop a future state on that. Now you turn around and say, my SMEs can't think outside the box. They're horrible. They've given me nothing. I have nothing to work with. Fine, you have your current state. I uh, would go ahead and create a three future states, one with a five, a 10, and a 15% risk reduction. 
And now in your report, and you might say, well, these are hypothetical. So you, you let your management team know these are hypothetical, they're assumptions. But if we had a tool that reduced our loss exposure by 10%, this is what our risk would be. And, and you have something there that fills up the reporting, shows a little bit more value, helps them make some better decisions. And you might even have an executive come and say, hey, they didn't know this was coming down the line. We're actually thinking about this product. Can you go ahead and do a, a future state on this? And it just fosters the communication a little bit more. Uh, on the other side, rationale template. <laughs> so I have here, ensures proof of defensibility and easier reporting. Um, as I performed analyses, I go back, I don't know if anybody's familiar with the risk lens tool, but every, this is inputs everywhere, right? And every input has a rationale field. So I'd be really diligent, thought I was doing a good job, and I'm typing out, you know, I spoke to so-and-so, and this is what they told me. And I go back a month later, and I, I, I couldn't understand my own notes, or, you know, it just it didn't read really true, and my head wasn't in the analysis, and I wasn't in the same mindset. So I made a small change that had a big impact. Um, that's just a text field, but I made a template, a template to follow. And every time I speak to a SME, these are the things I'm going to ask them, or these are the things I'm going to cover when I gather data. So I just say, well, who did I speak to? When did I speak to them? The questions I asked? The answers they gave me, and some other inputs here, like you know, additional info that they may have uh, looked at controls. And then I extended it to, all right, well, they gave me a bin, the most likely and a max, but what was their thought process behind it? Did they add a lot to defensibility? I can go back and report on that and, and call back to that fairly quickly, depending if somebody said, well, why did they give you that information? Um, a few other fields in here, but the other two that are, to me, most important, calculations and assumptions. Calculations. If you're going to do a calculation that's 2 plus 2 equals 4, write down 2 plus 2 equals 4. Be as diligent as you can, be as explicit as you can, because I would go back and look at my notes, and I probably did something on the calculator, did a, re a reduction of 20% or what have you, and I couldn't figure out how I got to that number, and it was driving myself crazy, and I probably spent an hour trying to get back into the head. I'm thinking, this is going to be good, I'm going to be able to remember who to go back to. And then I realized the list is getting long, and as I start to do new analyses, I can't remember who to go back to, even, even with the, the notes I've taken. So I started to say, I need a way to backdoor this. I need a way to search for my SMEs in a way that's from a, a fair context or a fair variable that I'm looking for. So I started to align my SMEs with fair variables, associate them with fair variables. So I create an effect column and have your confidentiality, integrity, and availability. So now I know a scope and analysis and this one's for the law statements pertaining to confidentiality. So right away, I can sort this list out and I have all the people on my list maybe just confidentiality, but it's still pretty big and it cuts it by half, let's say. So then I have further down the list, uh, frequency, primary, loss. Uh, now I'm looking for somebody in that list with respect to uh, resistive strength. So filter down further, now I have two or three people. Now I can call someone out and say, oh yeah, I spoke to this person, I didn't remember the name before, now I have the notes on them, it's just easier to get to. Um, and some other variables here, we have secondary loss, response cost. Uh, so it's just an easy way to you know figure out who can give you what and so you, how you can get back to it later. Uh, the last column there is a little hard to see the, the heading, it's uh, data types. I'm playing around with um, identifying who's there with the PCI data, et cetera. Push my button a little bit early. All right, um, just to recap though, this is uh, Voltron, bring it all together, just talk about you know, the lines coming together, form Voltron, another favorite cartoon, what we just covered. Uh, we have onboarding, so I highly recommend getting executive buy-in so they can champion your efforts internally. Training, get other people involved so they can speak to what you're working on. Uh, we went through our example analysis, so you have current state, future state, very good to compare both of those, and you saw an example there. And the three solutions I just went through that I hope even if you're not using the response tool, you can take some of that back with you and, and implement your own environment. So I hope that was helpful. Thank you.